Hey, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, we're gonna go over the tools you're gonna need to work on your very first vintage small engine and garden tractor. So every year, I convince hundreds, if not thousands of people to start the great hobby of working on and using vintage garden tractors and vintage small engines. It really, uh, it makes me so happy to be able to share this passion with other people and not only share it, but convince them to do it with me. So if you're one of these uh, new to the hobby people, you wanna get started getting your hands dirty, working on old small engines, old tractors, this is the video for you. We're gonna talk about some of the basic tools that you're gonna need to get started. Now, before we get into this, I wanna just give this disclaimer. Now, on the internet, there's a ton of people who are brand crazy about tools. I am not one of them. My advice for you, if you're just starting out or even if you've been doing this for a while, pay no attention to the crazy brand wars uh, that happen over the internet. Get the tools at the most convenient location to you. For me, I live about an hour away from Symbolization, so I get tons of my tools from Amazon, and when I do go into town, I go into Harbor Freight. Uh, the point is, go into whatever store is closest to you and get your tools there. Most every store that sells tools now have a really easy warranty exchange program. If you ever break a tool, you just take it back to where you bought it, they'll give you a new one. No fuss, no muss. Uh, a lot of my tools come from Amazon and a lot of those companies that I'll talk about later. Uh, all you have to do is send them a picture of your broken tool and they'll send you another one. Now you'll notice that my personal tool set, I don't own any snap-on tools. I don't own any of the super premium tools, yet I use and abuse them every day. And I've only broken one tool in my entire career of doing this, and that was a little driver bit. And then the company I bought it from mailed me a replacement. So before we get into this, uh, you know, the comments I'm sure that will show up about brand tool versus this brand tool, ignore the noise, get the tools that are closest to you, and let's get to work. Okay, here's an overview of some of the tools we're going to talk about today. We're going to start off with the really basic and move on to some of the more specialty engine tools that you're going to need. First up is a combination wrench set. A wrench set like this, I got this particular set off of Amazon. The brand is called Tekton, which I learned is Greek for artist or artisan. Uh, pretty cool. This is a great set. I think it's like $50 on Amazon. Very affordable, really nice chrome to it. I mean, it's a wrench set. What else can you say? This will last you for the rest of your life. Now we've got some socket wrenches. I recommend using three different sized and style socket wrenches. This first one I just held, that is a quarter inch drive socket wrench in a nice short stubby length. The second one was a three eighths inch drive with a medium length. And this last one I'm holding is a half inch drive that is a lot longer and heavier. I usually use that shortest socket wrench when I'm working on engines and those smaller nuts and bolts. It makes it much handier and easier on the wrist to use. The medium socket wrench I use for all my spark plug uh, attachments when I'm removing various spark plugs. And then that half inch one, that's the one I'm using when I'm working on heavier tractor frame and transmission parts. It's uh, bigger, more comfortable for when you put a lot more torque on it to loosen or tighten up bolts. Now we're on to the flexible ratcheting combination wrench. Uh, I love these. These are the mechanics fidget spinner. I'm always doing this with them flicking them around, listening to them click. In addition to making you less bored in the shop, they are also great for getting into tight spaces in between components in the steering column uh, and sometimes between the engine and the frame. They're fantastic. These are probably what I have in my pocket when I'm walking around my property, taking apart stuff all the time. These are very handy to have. I got these, uh, I think, from Home Depot. These are Husky brand, but you can get them anywhere. Every company makes a version of these. If you've been a fan of this channel, you'll know that I love my adjustable wrench. This is a Crescent brand adjustable wrench. I use these for just about everything, for wrenching, for hammering, for prying, 
pretty much I eat with them. I use them all the time. This wrench right here is one of those cheap $2 adjustable wrenches that are always in the bargain bins at your hardware store. I usually go to the store and will buy a dozen of them. I keep one of these cheap adjustable wrenches in all my working tractors. That way if something loosens up or needs repair in the field, instead of having five or six combination wrenches, that adjustable wrench I keep on the tractor can solve most of my problems. Highly recommended. I know some people don't like using adjustable wrenches, but I do, and I have a lot of them. Next up are two tools you will frequently find in my hands in the shop. This is a set of linesman pliers. I use these to move fuel clamps out of the way, pull fuel lines out, pull cotter pins out, pull hair pins out. Anything that needs a good grip on it, I use that for. This is a set of uh, cutting pliers. I also am using these to cut fuel lines, to cut rusted wire off or rusted anything. I use them to cut cotter pins off. Great tools. Now let's get into power tools. This right here is a half inch drive electric impact wrench. These are indispensable and must have tools if you're getting into the hobby of small garden tractors. These impact wrenches, if you use these to remove stubborn bolts, you'll actually lessen the chance of breaking old bolts. It'll make removing uh, mower blades a lot easier and pretty much just removing all the heavy duty bolts that are holding your tractor together. Using an impact wrench is much, much easier than using uh, a combination wrench and a socket wrench at the same time to remove bolts. All you have to do is put the impact wrench up to a nut or a bolt, hit the button, and it will come loose. It will make removing and taking apart tractors much, much easier. This right here is the impact socket wrench. This is another Tecton brand tool I got from Amazon. These are six-point impact sockets. The six points means that there are six flats in the wrench itself, so the contact of the socket will contact each flat of the bolt or nut that you're working on. It gives it a much more efficient transfer of power so you can remove those nuts and bolts. When you're shopping for an electric impact wrench like this one, you want to make sure that that electric impact wrench is a part of a bigger system of power tools. Uh, the batteries that power these are not cheap, so you want to make sure whatever brand impact wrench you're getting, that that company also makes additional regular power drills, reciprocating saws, angle grinders, etc. that all take the same battery. One of the best tools to have when you're working on old garden tractors, the four and a half inch electric angle grinder. This one is a DeWalt 15 amp angle grinder. The 15 amp draw makes it very powerful. I use this to cut steel and it has more than enough power to cut any steel that I can get my hands on. It has a little trigger switch, which I find it very convenient. It puts my arms in a good location so I can use the angle grinder to make really straight and accurate cuts cuts. This here is another angle grinder that has a paddle thumb switch on it. I like to use this one for removing paint off of tractor sheet metal. It works great. The blade that's on it is a four and a half inch polycarbide disc. You probably hear me talk about this disc in a lot of videos. It is fantastic at quickly removing paint off of sheet metal without damaging the sheet metal. I actually prefer using this angle grinder in disc setup more than using sandblasting or chemical methods to removing paint. Now onto some specialty engine tools. This right here is a flywheel puller. This is 100% necessary for removing flywheels off of old, heavy-duty small engines like this one. This puller I purchased on Amazon. I've had it for 
maybe five, six years. I will leave a link in the description below to this tool as well as all the other tools I'm discussing. These uh, flywheel pullers come with this little bracket that has a bunch of different slots so you can line it up to a bunch of different applications. Has that little cone piece in the center for that threaded rod. And then it also comes with a whole bunch of different bolts of various threads, pitches, and lengths so you can use it on different flywheel applications. This is a valve spring compressor tool. This kind of C-clamp style one is the one that you want when working on flathead engines. Flathead engines means the valves are in the blocks. This will help you compress the valve spring so you can remove the keepers and then remove the valves. These are cheap tools, like $10, definitely worth purchasing. This here is a piston ring compressor tool. We sell these directly at iSaveTractors.com. They are vital for compressing your piston rings around your piston so you can install the assembly back into your engine block. This is a piston ring expander tool. This will help you expand the piston rings so you can install them back onto the piston without breaking the ring. A feeler gauge set is necessary to set your ignition point gap, to set your valve clearances, to check your crankshaft end play, as well as check your cylinder head for flatness. Now if you really want to get serious about small engine rebuilding, which I hope you do, you're going to want a set of outside micrometers. Now despite what you've read on the internet, you do not need a $1,000 plus set of micrometers. You can get an affordable set at places like Amazon and they will do you just fine. Just make sure that all the micrometers are zeroed out before you use them. Store them at room temperature and they will be plenty accurate for you. These micrometers here have a nice smooth thread. When you thread them in and out, you don't feel any grit or resistance. They come with standards like this two inch standard so you can make sure that your micrometer is zeroed out correctly. They come with tools so you can adjust the thimbles and they come with this great uh, carrying case set. This is a must have if you wanna rebuild your engine properly and make sure that everything is within spec. If you're getting a set of micrometers, you also might want to consider this little micrometer vise slash stand. This is designed to gently but snugly hold your micrometer so you can use both hands to hold a part such as a piston or a valve and measure it at the same time. I use these all the time. It makes it more comfortable to hold the part and therefore get a more accurate measurement. Now here's a collection of the torque wrenches that I use in my shop. The smallest torque wrench you see is a quarter inch drive torque wrench that registers in inch pounds. The next one above that is a three eighths inch drive that registers in foot pounds. And then the top two torque wrenches are half inch drive torque wrenches that register in foot pounds. Now the reason that you would need so many torque wrenches is each torque wrench uh, registers torque at a different range. Like this smallest one here, as I mentioned earlier, are inch pounds. These are great for torquing some of the two-cylinder connecting rod bolts. The blue-handled one, I use that one the most for torquing head bolts. It's a nice, comfortable uh, foot-pound one that has the ranges that I need. And then these last two torque wrenches, these are the strongest ones that I have. So I use these ones for torquing large flywheels, like on the two-cylinder K-series engines. They go up to a very high torque rating. Now, the reason you would want to use a torque wrench is it will precisely tighten a nut or a bolt to a finite measurement. Uh, this is very important when you're doing things like head bolts or flywheels, that you want to make sure you have a certain amount of pressure on the part. So these are called click type torque wrenches. So when you reach the preset torque value that you've set, the wrench actually kind of gives way and it clicks. So it doesn't let you torque the bolt any further after it clicks. And that is a great way to accurately bring a nut or a bolt to a specific torque value. The last tool I want to talk about in this video is what I think is the most important tool in your toolbox and often the most forgotten about. This is a digital multimeter. Think of this as a doctor's stethoscope for electricity. It makes it so you can see electricity in the form of numbers and it can help you diagnose a variety of electrical problems. I talk to so many people on the phone who have tractor issues and they're not able to diagnose it because they don't have a multimeter. 
Now, this multimeter is an expensive one. It's a fluke one. I think it was a couple hundred dollars. I have several of them for the different locations I work out of. You do not need an expensive one like this. You can go to Walmart, go to Target, go to Harbor Freight, go anywhere and get a multimeter. The most important functions that I think you need on it, besides the typical uh, resistance voltage amperage is the continuity setting the continuity setting is the little Wi-Fi looking symbol on the dial make sure that the digital multimeter you get has that you can use that a lot I'm gonna make a future video in the future discussing all the functions of the multimeter but the lesson is the same you should have one well I hope you like this video all the tools I talked about are gonna be linked in the description below Please give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment below. If enough people like this video, I'll do another video talking about some of the more fun tools that you can use in the shop, like welders, plasma cutters, oxyacetylene, that kind of thing. Also, don't forget isavetractors.com. We are the leading developers of aftermarket small engine parts, like for your old Kohler K-Series, Tecumseh, Briggs & Stratton, Wisconsin, and Onan engines. Please check us out at isavetractors.com. My name is Norman. Thanks for watching.